Hello, I'm Leroy Garcia, and this is Blue Rain Gallery Podcast. Today in the studio, we have with us a wonderful and talented artist in Andrea Peterson. Welcome, Andrea. Thank you. <laughs> Let's learn a little bit about Andrea Peterson. Andrea has been uh, showing and exhibiting off and on with Blue Rain for the past, what, 10 years or so? Yeah. Would probably. you say around 10? And uh, I, I initially met um, Andrea in Phoenix with one of my other friends, Nikki Wengler, and uh, got to know her, uh, started collecting some of her works. Uh, really, really love it. Uh, we'll talk about what those works are and, and how, what you like to paint. But tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, your roots, and uh, also t- talk to us a little bit about your artistic journey. Okay, well, um, I grew up along the East Coast, uh, coastal North Carolina is where my my family is where I still go home in the summers to visit which is a nice reprieve from Phoenix summers Too hot. <laughs> and um, and then I moved uh, after college I lived very briefly in DC for one year and uh, worked at a PR firm there which was a great experience then New York City for about four or five years uh, before moving out west um, which was kind of, let's see, what was the, uh, what spurred that move was the the financial Lehman's Brothers crash, all that stuff around uh, late 2008 or 2009. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. Um, My job at the time, my day job was a secretary at a finance firm. And I mean, I still did my New York, you know, my art in New York. Uh, I would, but you know, had to have that day job in New York City. <laughs> yeah. Did you have uh, formal schooling in art, or did you are you I self-taught? Did, I well, uh, I like to say a little bit of both. I did go to um, a great art school or a you know university with a great art program, East Carolina University um, in Greenville, North Carolina. I majored in like, graphic design and illustration. Um, that was the deal with my parents helping out. Oh, I nice. wanted to major in fine art painting. <laughs> so, but it ended up being great because I learned a lot of skills with that and the graphic design that would serve me later in life and in my career. Um, so a lot of the painting uh, I did kind of, you know, I took a few classes, but I ended up really, le- you know, playing around a lot of with that myself um, over the next several years. And I would say probably mid to late twenties is when I feel like I actually got a handle on oil painting and the style that would evolve to become the style I have today. How would you describe your style? Uh, Describe it as a bit um, surreal with a focus on yeah, uh, the female figure is very prominent in my work, and uh, nature, and sometimes animals. Um, uh, you know, I have well, as you know, since you have some of my work, my style varies. I do, you know, have uh, an affinity towards the kind of some more pop art or lowbrow art, and that I feel like was big. And um, I was in my late twenties and going to shows in uh, LA and New York Um, but then I do love classical paintings again with the female figures um, probably throughout my 30s was finding like a blend between those or and sometimes just bouncing back and forth like um, that was one of the things when I was in uh, college my teachers were like find one style and then <laughs> and you're all over in the place. <laughs> yeah and throughout throughout my artistic career I've kind of allowed myself to go back and forth and explore and experiment um I find your work to be surrealistic but also whimsical mm-hmm. um the last painting I bought um makes me think about you because when I when I think about you I think of you as uh, like a mermaid out there in the ocean because <laughs> you love the ocean so yes, much. Yes, everyone who knows me knows I love the water and mm-hmm. a big swimmer and ocean anything aquatic. Yeah, so uh, that painting has um is it a blue mermaid? It is, yep. Uh, blue. Um, well, the lo- the mermaid with the blue lobster. <laughs> yeah, the mermaid with the blue lobster. <laughs> the tattooed mermaid. <laughs> uh-huh. And and uh, the first painting I bought uh, 
was a girl riding a bee. Mm-hmm. So yes. it's just really, really whimsical. We'll, we'll post some of these uh, paintings on this uh, podcast so people can see what we're mm-hmm. talking about. Yeah. Um, we uh, enlisted you uh, recently to participate in a show based on the early Taos founders. Uh, this mm-hmm. year we're celebrating the life of Kaus. Mm-hmm. And um, you uh, made a painting and you brought that today. And uh, tell us a little bit about the history of this painting, the uh, Kaus' side, and mm-hmm. then your interpretation of what you saw. Okay, so I did uh, choose Kaus's uh, possi- possibly more controversial painting called The Captive. Um, and that was, but it was also one of his first, and, and maybe if not his first painting of uh, Native American. And um, so he did, he painted, it was a scene based on, um, you know, an actual event that happened uh Unfortunately, you know, with the settlers bringing measles, and I believe, uh, I forget the um, actual tribe name in Northwest Washington where that event occurred, but spread measles, you know, as we know, uh, to the Native American population there. And then they were angry and and kind of attacked some of the settlers and uh, took a a captive, a a female, um, who did survive it. But... His representation of that, I felt like, and, and it did get so much press, you know, it was exhibited at the Paris Salon in the late 1800s, uh, I felt was a little um, cherry picking, you know, just these one bad instances, whereas it was really uh, kind of the US territorial expansion of the West, you know, as we now know, and, and all the um, really kind of horrific things that happened you know, yeah. from, from that side of things. So, uh, and, but I will say with him as an artist that I don't necessarily think that that was reflecting, you know, maybe his beliefs. He probably just was picking this as a romanticizing this subject matter because his later paintings and all his paintings after that did depict uh, of the much more peaceful nature, which was... It's, it's kind of what we've uh, known to be... The, the romance of the West. Right. I think he, he definitely got that, um, and maybe the origination was from that, mm. that point. So from that painting to this, what, mm. what, how did you get there? So, um, so I took that and uh, kind of uh, took it back to the um, harmony to have a piece that represents what was probably Native Americans' most, you know, uh, as we know, they're, how they're, they were in such harmony with nature and with their natural environment. Um, so instead of the Native American watching over the figure, you know, um, I have a regal tiger that looks like a protective figure. Um, you know, she's not bound. She's peacefully sleeping or resting under this cherry blossom tree. Uh, you know, I love symbolism, which shows up in, in all my paintings um, at some point or another. So the cherry blossoms, the cherry blossom tree, you know, is known for when it blooms. It only blooms for about uh, two or so weeks. And um, so it's in a Japanese culture, like a known representation of the... Um, you know, the beauty, but also the uh, temperance and um, what is the word I'm looking for? <laughs> the, um, you know, how to, to enjoy, to be in the moment that, um, you know, the, the fleeting nature of life. But, you know, I don't want that to sound macabre in, in the beautiful way. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, having this scene kind of just be that reflection of... Um, when you are, are at harmony with nature, you know, being in nature, in harmony with nature, and nature within you. And uh, when people really embody that, it, it can be, a, you know, um, I would say life, is life changing too big? <laughs> but, but I think over the past several years, we've all done kind of dove deep a lot with our thoughts like that. And, um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to have this very kind of peaceful. Well, it's a beautiful um, painting. And um, thank you for sharing uh, how you came to, uh, 
to this painting and the explanation of it. It, it makes it even more beautiful. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Andrea um, actually gave me the idea for our new business, Blue Rain Print Shop. Um, and it's been quite a journey. How, how would you describe your journey with Blue Rain Print Shop so far? Oh, um, I mean, pretty fantastic because uh, it's not often I get to bounce ideas off someone that's as proactive with them as you are. <laughs> <laughs> And actually, <laughs> you took the bull by the horns and, um, you know, found uh, a great way to put it together and piece it together with an actual, you know, web shop and have these cool, cool useful things, huh? products. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. the, the idea, um, I, I was watching some of your posts and I, I, I've seen you uh, in your own marketing of your own products uh, on Instagram and, and it, it, it was like, gave me the idea, you know, there's a lot of artists doing that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, well, Blue Rain has a great platform. Definitely. And that's how we got into it. But uh, yeah, you've served as a big inspiration. So. Well, you have a great variety of artists whose work also really uh, works well in the printed form, too. And I think it's an awesome option for people. There's so many, you know, art aficionados, admirers, you know, people out there of all ages and not necessarily all of them are in a place to you know collect originals or maybe the originals they want so having the printed products is a great option for people to be able to have art in their life mm -hmm. um you know without without having to you know make the commitment of or you know the painting they really want but isn't feasible right, right now it's, it's a for, a <laughs> I mean, myself included mm -hmm. i collect art as well but there are paintings that, you know, just are not in my budget. And yeah. so I would, you know, having a print or a printed product where I get to see every day, it does at least give me that little bit of joy yeah, to enjoy it's, it. It has been fun working with you. Yeah. And uh, appreciate you coming in today, Andrea. Yeah. Um, thank you for coming in. Uh, I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to our podcast on all the platforms, especially YouTube and uh, Spotify and iTunes. And you can also reach that... Uh, on our website, bluerangallery.com. I'd like to encourage everybody, like we talked about, uh, to bring art into your everyday life by going to bluerangprintshop.com. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>